Brian, I wanted to ask you, um, with this film, with uh, Choosing Apocalypse and then using the uh, early reveal of Apocalypse, I know that there was some like some fan backlash, and then you kind of came forward recently mm -hmm. and like explained that, and it was, yeah. made perfect sense. Um, but I'm curious, like you know, now you have like Fox pulling out of Hall H, kind of as a, you know because of like these early teases kind of getting out and leaving the wrong impression. And I'm curious yeah. what if that impact is felt on you or like with any future projects you do. Well, very often I think a lot of those decisions are informed by lots of things, the economics, a lot of actor availability. Sometimes you just, especially with casts this big, getting everyone in one place at the same time. Um, you know, the, hence we're all here in London, you know, because of certain, you know, geography. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, each movie is different. You know, I always, you know, work with marketing, with publicity and, and try to get the right message out. Um, the example of the, the first image of Apocalypse, it happened to be everyone looked pink because right. it was the light effect that accommodated a visual effect that wasn't there. Um, I even looked at the picture and, you know, ignorantly, I was like, yeah, they look cool because I remembered, because I knew what was supposed to be there. Obviously, fans, you know, didn't, but, you know, a backlash is nothing that you know, upsets me because I've dealt with it. When I cast Hugh Jackman, six foot three actor to play a five foot four Wolverine, can you imagine? <laughs> you know, I was crucified. Uh, then, you know, first image of Quicksilver, oh my God, he looks ridiculous. No, he's a young kid in the 70s, he should look like this. Right. Uh, and then suddenly people love the scene, Hugh Jackman's done okay by Wolverine. It, if not, you know, obviously. So, so you know, there's always gonna be some of that in the blogosphere uh, amongst fans. I do my best as a filmmaker, just to focus on the movie at hand, and if there's a pre-existing fan base, listen to it very carefully, and in the end, service the movie, service the fan base as best I can, but also service people who aren't aware of the comic or whatever the fan base is, and are coming to it fresh. Even with this movie, if they've never seen an X-Men movie, I'm very aware, and I want them to be able to enjoy Apocalypse fresh. And, you know, in, in many ways, Apocalypse is an origin story, uh, which would, maybe seed you to go back and visit the other ones. Uh, I talked to Simon earlier today, and he said that the, the plan, uh, for him anyways, is to push uh, the next X-Men film into the 90s era. So I'm curious if, like, for you, is that something that enters into your head? I mean, do you have, like, a, yeah. a 90s set X-Men film in your head, like, with, you know, ideas in, in terms of what you want to push forward with that, or do you have to take a break? for a while before you come back to this universe and, and thinking about it. No, I've always said, when I originally set the trend of, of, of jumping decade to decade with uh, First Class, which I produced and wrote the story for, and then uh, Days of Future Past in the 70s, you know, jumping decade, decade, and now this in the 80s, so it's a natural progression to go to the 90s. So that that's something, you know, he and I have talked about. Beyond that, I, I you know, Simon can, you know, begin a process. What, to what degree I'm involved will depend on where I'm at at any, you know, time in my life as a, as a person and a filmmaker. Uh, but I always like to do something in between, uh, whether it's in television or movies, uh, so I don't, you know, I'm not just simply, a, you know, making X-Men movies Journey my whole life. And so I, there's a movie I hope to make next, uh, 20,000 Leagues at Fox, actually. and. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see how X-Men evolves, but I can't see myself abandoning the franchise, and I'm happy to see it progress in that manner. I think, though, we've opened up the door to all kinds of timelines. We're producing a television series, Simon and I, uh, with Lauren Schuler Donner about, uh, uh, you know, called Legion, which is in a, sort of an alternate space from the X-Men universe. There's lots of different places you can go, especially now that we've set it up that way. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, kind of what you thought about uh, Deadpool and how he fits into the overall X-Men universe at this point. I first saw Deadpool in a rough cut form with a small test screening. Half of the audience actually recognized me, so I was very self-conscious watching the movie. But once it got started, I, I found the humor, uh, Ryan Reynolds, just so funny, so talented, and all the meta humor, particularly the jokes about my own films, so wonderful and in a way comedically flattering that every time my boss, uh, the head of the studio, was looking over at me, I was just laughing out loud and then trying to cover myself because half the audience knew I was sitting there and I didn't want to go overboard, but I was genuinely, you know, and I very rarely let LOL, you know, in a movie, and and it just it, and 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 yes, I do feel he fits into the entire X Men universe because they're not just funny, irreverent, meta moments in that movie. There's some genuinely 
deep, serious, and emotional moments in that movie. And Deadpool uh, represents the ultimate themes of X-Men, the outsider, hiding in the shadows. Will he be accepted? Won't he? How does he react to that? And he just happens to do it in a heightened, meta, comedic, and at times ultra-violent way. X-Men in a different way. So he fits magnificently, and I hope to see a day when one day he crosses paths with, you know, cross paths with my X-Men. So you guys have been working together since first class, and I'm curious, um, outside of the script, how do you guys work to develop the relationship between Raven and Xavier as you progress through the films all the way up till now? Outside of the script? Yeah, outside of the script, just between the two of you. I don't really, we just hang out and, and chat and sort of maintain cordial relations. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but it's true though, isn't it? It's like, yeah. we don't work on it, we don't have to, because we've known yeah. each other for such a long time. And, and the script does a hell of a lot for us. Uh, I think the fact that we've got a group of people that like each other, very familiar with each other, we check in with each other like once a year, whether it's making the movie or whether it's doing a press tour the year after making the movie, right. and then making another movie the year after that. It just keeps us quite connected, really. Which is, we don't have to work at it too hard, unfortunately, sorry. I'd love to see it like, we sweat blood to bring this relationship to the screen. We are literal blood brothers. <laughs> yeah. I cut my ankles that's, and I, mean, I that's rubbed them on my it. face. Um, now, Jennifer, you've said that um, you'd be interested in continuing to play Raven in future films. I'm curious what direction you'd like to, to see her go. Um, well, I know that, you know, from um, Rebecca Romaine's days, I, I, we see her kind of, you know, follow right. Magneto. I would like to see her follow Charles. I mean, even <laughs> though I have more fun with Fassbender on set. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I want well, everybody to follow I, I felt like we were kind of going in that direction in this movie when she kind of comes comes back to Charles and they both recognize that they have a they 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 see the world differently, but they've kind of found this common thread, and I, I was enjoying that. I'd like to continue that. Now you have obviously shaved your head completely for this one, going full Xavier. I went full blown Xavier. Full Xavier. Got a full Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brazilian. And you're heading right towards kind of the same path as you know with with Patrick Stewart in that sense. So I mean, I'm curious. Have you ever discussed with Patrick Stewart the the relationship of, of Xavier and how he was, you know, how he's transitioned onto film? I'm curious if you guys have ever compared notes on the character. Not really? We no. spent a bit of time talking about Macbeth. Weirdly. Oh. But we've not really talked about Charles. Every time I've played Charles before this film, he's been a very different version of Charles than the one that Patrick portrayed. Uh, and in this one, this one I'm kind of moving towards what Patrick did. <clears throat> but we never really talked about it too much. We talked about his empathy. And his empathy being the most important defining characteristic of him, and maybe even more important than his superpower. His superpower is really just an, an extension of his greatest personal characteristic, I think, which is his ability to empathise. Um, and that was it, really. He took the rest from there. Uh, and I'm glad we did that, because I don't want to... He's got to play the character again. I've got to play the character again. I've, he's got to walk his path. Right. I'm going to walk my path. If he tells me what to do one more time, <laughs> I'll, I'll shave his the rest of him <laughs> off. Uh, no, we're just kind of, I think we, you never want to tread on another actor's toes and you want to have freedom to do what you do, you know? Right. Uh, last question, this is just from the fans real quick. Uh, even though this is X-Men, they just want to know, are you guys Team Cap or Team Iron Man? Iron Man. I just, uh, I think, oh, mate. <laughs> team Cap. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. All right, so Civil War. Stops here. <laughs> uh, so for starters, how much does it suck being in an X Men movie? Sucks. It's pretty hard. Yeah. yeah sucks pretty I mean, hard. there's nightmares and there's nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> I keep just keep spitting today. So Why I'm, do you keep spitting? I don't know. I guess I'm drenched. <laughs> I <can> spit. <laughs> spit. 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 Um, so Sophie, I have to ask you because with Game of Thrones playing Sansa, you've had a rough time. Yes. Uh, and now as Jean mm. Grey, uh, and, and especially in this film, it feels like you, uh, you've kind of embraced your power to an extent, although you struggle with it. I'm curious if that's freeing to you to be able to play a role like that in comparison to Game of Thrones. It is very freeing um, because I'm so used to playing like the oppressed person. <laughs> um, and it's, it's really nice to have a character who really kind of comes into her own and um, is able to embrace all the things that she she doesn't like so much about herself and um, and utilize them for 
the greater good. The greater good. Uh, and it's and fun to just not cry. <laughs> you know? That's true. Well, I, I don't know. Do you cry in this one? At least not yeah, like Thrones not like X-Men? babbling. No, in X Men Apocalypse. Oh, like maybe like one tear. Like one tear. Yeah. That's nothing. <laughs> like it was in her contract. Emotional. She would only give one tear. Only, only one. Give it costs one. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're lucky for this tear. <laughs> now, Evan, for your part, I mean, you're such a huge like fan favorite with Days of Future Past, mm-hmm. and it seems like yeah. in this one, you're like the person that's having the most fun on screen. So I'm curious if that, I mean, was it as much fun playing that for you? Yeah, absolutely. It was a blast. I mean, shooting that thing is, uh, it's long. It takes a long time, but it's it's fun. You know, you're doing something really uh, really weird and, and, uh, and kind of cool. And, and the special effects are amazing. So it's, I love special effects. So I, I was really excited to, to be a part of that scene for sure. So I just had a blast. And then Olivia, you, you fought like pretty hard in terms of like keeping the look and the integrity of the character mm-hmm. for Psylocke. I'm curious, what was like most? What was the most important thing to you in getting right with with Psylocke? In the X Men movies, uh, the the costumes have usually been inspired by the comic books. But to me, I felt that because Psylocke was such such a visually iconic character, it had to be um, just like the comics. And thankfully, he was on board with that. And um, that if my characters being introduced, there um, had to be a strong fight scene because that is something that is um, such a a huge characteristic of Psylocke, and uh, those are two things that I um, that were very important to me when I signed on to the movie. And thankfully, they you know they they were cool with it. Um, in the end, Brian, we shot so much of the fight scene, and Brian kept I think maybe like like a little less than half of what we actually shot. So it'll be cool to see the you know to see the whole finished one later, probably on a DVD or something, because he was really great about letting me like shoot and get so much of the fight scene. All right, so. Jubilee. Yay! You are officially Jubilee at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. What has that been like? How does it feel going from getting the role and starring in the film, yeah. being in the film, and now just basically being Jubilee? How has that resonated? Um, it's kind of like, okay, it's kind of like the ultimate cool factor. Like, if anyone's like, because sometimes when people are like, oh, what do you do as your job? I'm like, I'm an actor. And they're like, oh, have you been in anything that like I would know about? I was like, oh, well, I was an X-Men. They're like, you're an X-Men? Who were you? And then I say, oh, it's Jubilee. Everyone knows. And it's like crazy. Everyone knows who Jubilee is. So it's kind of like the ultimate like instant Kool-Aid to wear. <laughs> but it's awesome. I love her. I, I love her. She's amazing. Sometimes I think I am her. And then I get confused up here, you know? <laughs> so do you feel like you've taken like ownership of the character? Like, you know, like it's yours? Kind of like... You know, Hugh Jackman did with Wolverine, like, that, he's always um, played it that way. Do you feel that way with Jubilee? I have so much exploration and things that I want to do with her and moments that I want to have. I want people to actually see her powers and magnitude. So there's a lot of developing that I still really want to do, but, I mean, she's mine! <laughs> Don't take her away! <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So in the deleted scene on the Blu-ray, mm-hmm. we do get to see some of Jubilee's powers, which we yeah, didn't yeah. get to see in the film. Well, how did that strike you? Was that kind of what you had in your head in terms of like, even though it's a very small little tease of it, was that yeah. kind of? Um, you know, that's funny that you asked that because I didn't really know what to expect. So many people tell me different things of what it's gonna look like, but you know, when you're doing it, there's nothing coming, coming out of your hand, so it's hard to put together a visual. But I was pleasantly surprised by the color of my power. Cause I was like, okay, that's fun. I can dig. With, I can dig that. Um, obviously, I want it to be bigger. Like it was just. It was like a tease. It was a right. moment. But um, I. I like it. It's different. It's different than. I'm glad it doesn't look like you know how like Storm has her lightnings right, right. and like Cyclops like has her that whatever that is like. It looks different. So I'm happy. It has its own signature. It has its own I mean, signature. Like, like yeah. It's kind of sparks, fireworks, yeah. which is what it should be. But I've imagined explosions, and there will be them. <laughs> That's the last thing I do. So what did you take home from the set? Are you asking me if I stole anything? Yes. <laughs> um, I didn't steal anything, just so you know. <laughs> Props. But some, I was given sunglasses. Like, Jubilee wears sunglasses, like, because she's cool. And like it's also automatic Kool Aid if you wear sunglasses because no one can see your eyes. But um, 
I took home a pair of sunglasses. But you did not get the yellow jacket. I saw it upstairs. Isn't it amazing? I put. Morning. Isn't it amazing? I put it on when I went up there, and I felt right at home. But um, there was twelve jackets of the set. They were twelve, and they didn't. Yeah, which I. I mean, if that, was bummed about. But hopefully, in the future, maybe if they have more, and I'm lucky enough to be in it. I'll talk like I maybe it's like you have to like it's like you have to put in your dues or something. Yeah, it's three or four movies. Yeah, time. and then you can the keep Jackson it. Jackson has the claws now, but it took like four movies. I held those claws <laughs> once. It was epic. They're so heavy. It's wow, crazy. you could. I mean, you could almost do X twenty three if you wanted to. You could be both. Dual roles. I mean, let's do it. <laughs> uh, so what? What would you want to do? I mean, obviously, we want bigger fireworks. Mm -hmm. But what would you see for Jubilee? What would you like to see happen with her? Would you like to see her team up with Wolverine? Would you like to see oh her take her own journey? Obviously, have... I'd like to see her team up with Wolverine. Oh, that would be the dream. I could die after that happy. But um, I'd like to. I would. I'd like to see her fight. I'd like to see her athletic abilities come out because she's a gymnast and that would be really like I could imagine the training for that would be really fun. Um, I. All I ask is I would really like to see her fight. I would really like to show her to show everyone how epic she can be because she's been underrepresented in the former movies and she's slowly building. So I'd just like her to see her just kill people. That'd be awesome. <laughs> kill people with fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it could happen. You could catch them on fire. That's true. I mean, people die from fireworks every year, but usually because they kill themselves with fireworks. Ooh, this is getting morbid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, now that the X-Men, now that Apocalypse is finished, mm -hmm. uh, what is next for you? Um, in terms of, like, when will you see Jubilee again? Or, like, Jubilee in, or, or Lana? What's going on with you? What are you yeah. Doing? Well, I don't know anything about Jubilee because everyone keeps everything a secret and won't tell me probably until the very end. Well, Simon did say that the next one would take place in the 90s. Oh, but it... Jubilee factors heavily into that. So... Okay, so we have hope. Good. So Good to know. definitely hope. Um... But uh, Patriot's Day, a movie I shot um, about the Boston Marathon bombing, is coming out, I believe, in December, but I'm not 100% sure on the date. And that's going to be amazing. And I'm so honored to be a part of that because it's a lot different playing real people who are affected by tragedy versus, you know, a a, a comic book character because it's the the stakes are a little higher I think because it's a very delicate situation and making that movie was amazing and super humbling because we did it in Boston and we also shot during the the marathon this year so this whole thing was very um I f feel great honor to be a part of it for sure and so that's going to come out and I hope everyone sees it and I think it's going to be amazing and then there's like a, a couple more that are probably going to come out eventually, but I just don't know the dates. So, you know. Awesome. Well, <laughs> I love you as Jubilee. Yeah. I hope we get to see more Jubilee. Me in too. The 90s. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yay, that was fun. <laughs>